Today I'm going to be reviewing the next iteration in one of my favorite movie franchises with Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. I'm going to go over the audio, Atmos hot effects, the bass, and the visuals. And at the end of this video, I want to know your thoughts on the movie down in the comments and whether you're going to pick this up to add to your movie collection. Let's discuss. For this review, I'll be using 11 Arendelle speakers in a 7.2.4 configuration, 5 1723S monitors for LCR and rear surrounds, two 1961 monitors for side surrounds, two 1961 bookshelf, and two 1961 height speakers for Atmos height effects. For LFE, I'm using two Starkson SW15 sealed subwoofers in a stack configuration. Processing the audio is an Emotiva RMC1 with Emotiva and Starkson amplifiers powering the speakers. And for visuals, I'll be using an Epson LS12000B 4K projector. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes brings us 300 years since the events of War for the Planet of the Apes and a breathtakingly beautiful landscape with a cinematography that is marked by its rich and immersive portrayal of a post-apocalyptic world dominated by evolved apes. I was particularly excited for this home release to see how the audio would be utilized, seeing as we're surrounded in a world full of apes climbing and jumping around trees and buildings in essentially overgrown forests the size of cities. As far as the bed layer, it's actually pretty immersive. Throughout the movie, you can hear numerous birds, insects, horses, and leaves blowing in the wind, and other creatures of life immersing you in the dystopian world of the apes. And a lot of the times, you can hear these creatures off screen adding to the immersion. But for a blockbuster action movie, I feel like the Atmos mix still could have been better, especially when we talk about the high channels. Early on in the movie, when Noah returns home to find his home being raided by rival apes, there's some good moments that showcase atmospherics and channel separation. As far as any height activity in the scene, Disney once again does what they always do and misses the mark with the height channels. For instance, when part of the treehouse comes barreling down in flames on the upper left part of the screen and hits the battlefield, you should be able to distinctly hear and track the object from the height channel down to the bed layer and into the subs. You get all of the above except the height channel activity. So there's an obvious audio gap during the sequence that can pull you out of the movie. And again, when Noah is trying to save his dad inside the treehouse, he's clearly elevated above both apes and even throws an object that hits the gorilla's head and explodes into shrapnel that sprays all over the place.
Again, there should be all kinds of distinct audio activity coming from the height channels during the sequence as Noah is clearly running around and throwing stuff at an elevated position. Even the camera angles are situated in a way to convey the height and elevation with Noah's position in relation to the other apes on screen. It would have been nice to have the height channels match the intensity and vantage point of the scene. But that's not to say that there isn't any height activity in this movie with some decent effects, which I'll touch on later. When we get to the creek scene where May and her fellow humans are being chased and hunted, I felt this scene did a really good job of atmospherics. You can hear the humans yelling and grunting, zebras barking, and apes screaming on horseback as all the chaos unfolds throughout the forest. This scene also does a good job of atmospherics once the chaos dies down and May is crawling through the pastures of grass. You can hear the hostile apes taunting her as they cut through the glass with their blades and you can hear Noah far off in the distances searching and calling for May. You really get a sense of depth and vastness of the open field with voices echoing throughout the vast landscape. This review of Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is provided by Kaleidoscape in partnership with our channel partner, The Grid Hi-Fi. For those interested in enhancing their dedicated home theater experience with Kaleidoscape, visit our Houston location, reach out to The Grid Hi-Fi via phone, or visit gridhifi.com. And now, Kaleidoscape has delivered on what customers have been asking for with the new Strato V movie player, now offering Dolby Vision with lossless audio at a lower cost of entry. As a standalone system, Strato V is a single playback zone and stores approximately 10 reference 4K movies on an internal solid state drive. It features a new streamlined interface optimized for navigating a small movie library. For each first time United States customer who purchases a Kaleidoscape system using my referral code, you'll earn $100 in movie credit and so will I. To participate in this offer, visit my referral link in the description of this video and follow the instructions. Links to our channel partner can also be found in the description below. As far as dialogue, there isn't a moment in this movie where dialogue ever gets muddied or is unintelligible. Your 
voices aren't razor sharp crisp like Dune Part 2, but you won't have any issues making out dialogue, even during heavy action scenes. The final showdown between Noah and Proximus once again displays great atmospherics primarily in the bed layer, with numerous voices and very apparent and distinct ape grunts that happen off screen, to the sides, and behind you that envelops you as an entire clan of apes all join together in unison as they sing their Eagle Clan chant. Stand. Stand now! That's it. River ape. Now, this scene is interesting because as good as the bed layer speakers sound, the high channels are an inconsistent mixed bag. When Noah is lying on the floor looking up and he sees the Eagle Clan flying above, you can faintly hear the eagles in the high channels. Now stand. Stand now! But once the Ape Clan starts calling all the eagles to attack Proximus, you have a dozen, if not more, eagles frantically flying around, attacking Proximus from all angles, with almost no eagle activity in the high channels. It's just bizarre. And this seems to be a theme throughout the movie with flying birds. If we skip back to the bridge scene, you can clearly see multiple seagulls flying above the apes, again with obvious and intentional camera angles to highlight the seagulls placement on screen. And while you do hear them, you don't hear the seagulls in the high channels. Just an absolute mind boggling decision to visually fixate on aerial activity on multiple occasions throughout the movie, and then not complement the visuals with proper channel placement. What the deuce, Disney? I wouldn't say the bass in this movie is as energetic and dynamic as Godzilla Minus One or Doom Part Two, but it's better than the likes of The Fall Guy. There are some scenes where the bass has some heft to it, but overall, nothing outstanding. But it does get the job done. When the flaming treehouse falls during the movie's first climatic battle, the bass kicks in and suffices to give you that heft that I mentioned earlier. There's not a lot of standout scenes for bass in this movie, as the plot is heavily driven by dialogue. But another scene with some hefty bass is when May detonates the explosives, and the water comes barreling over the barricades to flood the compound.
Again, Disney seems to have suppressed the bass in this movie just like they do in their other Atmos mixes. However, if you turn the volume up on your receiver or processor enough, you can get better audio levels that will enhance the experience, but a big missed opportunity on a movie that should be reference quality all the way through. The video is breathtakingly beautiful. The cinematography really is the standout on this home release with its combination of sweeping wide shots to capture the vast, desolate landscapes and intricate close-ups to emphasize the detailed facial expressions and emotions of the ape characters achieved through advanced motion capture technology. The color palette often shifts between muted earthy tones to reflect the naturalistic and decayed environment and more vibrant hues during scenes of conflict or moments of intense emotion. The color palette and lush colorful landscape are enhanced with cinematography that embraces dynamic camera movements, including fluid tracking shots and aerial perspectives to create a sense of scale and movement within the ape's world. The visual storytelling is fantastic, seamlessly blending live action footage with computer generated imagery to create a cohesive and believable universe. I wouldn't say this movie is gonna give your display a workout, but its cinematic eye candy is sure to leave you in awe anytime there are apes on screen with those incredibly realistic backgrounds and lush green landscapes, and the home release looks as beautiful as it did when I saw it at my local theater. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is a pretty decent transfer with solid bet layer immersion, but totally misses the mark on high talent activity. For a movie about apes that are constantly jumping and swinging above you, that is literally represented visually on screen, somebody needs to really start holding Disney accountable for these subpar mixes. When you've got movies out there like Doom Part 2 and Godzilla Minus One that are incredibly dynamic with Minus One being the pinnacle of high channel activity, there's really no excuse. But now it's your turn to share your thoughts on Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Have you seen it? And are you picking this up on Kaleidoscape or later on physical disc? Let me know down in the comments. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you found this review helpful or enjoyable. And if you wanna support the channel further, be sure to check out my affiliate links in the description below. Don't forget to come back for more future movie reviews and home theater related content. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.